Yes, how are you? Hope uh, everything is fine. Let me try to <clears throat> also go live on Facebook as well so that I can be able to speak about today's message. <laughs> uh, hmm. Today we want to decode. Decoding is basically um, dissecting. We want to dissect about this mark of the beast. We want to understand what exactly is the mark of the beast and uh, what does the Bible tell us about can Christians get, get the mark of the beast? Is it possible for born again Christians to get the mark of the beast? Okay, uh, just give me one second. Let me write this one because I'm a bit poor in writing as I as I type. I mean, as I speak, the mark of the beast. All right. Uh, so there are so many people who are always mixed up. And some say the mark of the beast will just be uh, maybe probably some something that you put on your hand others they say it's something in you know it's just a thought and others they say come on there's nothing like the mark of the beast so who are we to believe what what are we to believe what are we to understand concerning this so that's why i decided today to bring this so that you can be able to hear and we understand exactly what the mark of the beast is okay so um today we'll have a very deep one-on-one uh, -on -one, uh, talk. It will be a bit more one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, yes, I will give a lot of scripture, but also I'll give some common sense as well so that we can be able to see and uh, we'll be able to understand what uh, these things are like. So um, I want to check, can a Christian really get the mark of the beast? Is it, is it really possible? And uh, if it's possible, how can a Christian be able to escape uh, getting the mark of the beast? So the Bible tells us in Ephesians 1.13, it tells us something here that, uh, just let me show you. For those who uh, maybe say one way or another, a Christian can get the mark of the beast. Let's see. In Ephesians 1.13, the Bible says, in whom you also trusted after that you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation. In whom also after that you believed, you are sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. So after you believed, you are sealed with the Holy Spirit. Now, if you have the Holy Spirit in you, who is sealed in you, can the Holy Spirit go to hell? Not really, not really possible. I don't think the Holy Spirit can go to hell. And uh, when you see this, then it means uh, those people who will go to hell, they don't have the Holy Spirit. So how do you get that Holy Spirit is through believing the gospel. So for those who have believed the gospel, those who have gotten saved, the true salvation, like I always say over and over again, salvation is not some mantras that you repeat, is not some works that you do, is not uh, givings, is not anything that you do, is not even being a good guy. Salvation is not stopping sinning. Salvation is not all that. It is a change of mind. Repentance, when, when I tell you repent, it's all about changing your mind. So if you changed your mind from unbelief, from believing in other things to believing in Jesus Christ, then you got saved immediately. That nanosecond that you believed, you got the Holy Spirit. So if you have the Holy Spirit in you, in you we, the Bible tells us he is sealed until the day uh, that we, we will be redeemed. Because in Ephesians 4.30, it tells us there, and do not, and grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby you are sealed unto the day of redemption. So if you're sealed to the day of redemption, it means uh, someone who is sealed with the Holy Spirit to that day of redemption, can he really go to hell? No, you cannot go to hell, okay? Because the Holy Spirit cannot go to hell. Okay, so it means the people who will be getting the mark of the beast, probably and most definitely, they are not saved. And there are so many people who are in church right now who just, you know, they go to church every day, they do, you know, churchly things, but they are not saved. They just go to, you know, fill the seats and they repeat different things and just sing and have a good time. But uh, most of these guys, uh, they are not saved. All right. They are not saved. So uh, 
the, the thing that I like to tell you is you have to ask yourself, am I saved? Because only saved people will be able to uh, not get the mark of the beast. Now, let's, let's go to another point here. The mark of the beast is something people will choose to accept, okay? The, the, the people will choose to accept the mark of the beast. So it will not be forced into you, okay? The mark of the beast will not be forced into you. It is something that you will accept willingly and you say, okay, give me the mark of the beast. Put it on my hand or put it on my forehead or put it wherever it will be. So it's not something that somebody will force you because you, uh, if you will be forced, then it will mean um, you can, on the judgment day, you can stop and tell God, uh, God, you see, they forced me on this thing and uh, I got it and I was forced. They, they held my two hands and my two legs and they put something on me, okay? So it is something that you will have to accept yourself. If you don't accept it, if you say, no, I'm not taking the mark of the beast, what happens? If you say, I'm not taking the mark of the beast, what exactly will happen is they will, you know, beat you, they will imprison you, they will even kill you, but they will not force it onto you because that's not in the Bible. The Bible does not say anywhere that uh, uh, the mark of the beast will be uh, forced on anyone. No, it is something that you yourself, you will choose 100%. Uh, Andrea, please, you can uh, mute your microphone. You can mute your microphone, please. So it's something that uh, you will yourself be able to choose. So let's see the book of Revelation 20 verse 4. It tells us exactly what will happen. Now, this is for the people who will refuse to take the mark of the beast. 20 verse 4. And I saw thrones, and they that sat up on them, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls, you see, I saw the souls of them, I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus and for the word of God, and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon his forehead or their uh, hands. And they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. So for those people who will refuse the mark of the beast and they'll be in the time of tribulation, then what is going to happen is you're going to be beheaded. Your, your head will be cut off. You know, right now they're making, uh, you know, beheading stuff, guillotines and all those kind of things. So they will behead you if you're a, uh, a person who will refuse the mark of the beast. And of course, by the time they start beheading you, definitely the church will not be here. The church will have gone with the rapture. So it is for the people who have refused and they say, no, we don't want to hear this. We don't want uh, now the salvation of grace. And let me tell you, if right now you cannot be saved, my friend, if right now uh, you you don't want to be saved and you don't want to believe the gospel right now, when there's a lot of grace, you can live in peace, you can do, you know, how do you expect that time you'll be able to be saved? It's really so much impossible unless uh, something just happened. Of course, yes, you'll be beheaded, but it will be so difficult, so, 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 so difficult for uh, you that time to say that, uh, you know, I will not believe the gospel right now. I will uh, save myself with my own blood. There's a, a lady who told me that. I preached to her and she told me, ah, Keith, I don't care about this gospel stuff. I, let me enjoy my life. I'll save myself with my own blood. And I was like, at least I told you the gospel. <laughs> Your blood is not on my hands because the Bible tells us in the book of Ezekiel 31 that uh, we are God's watchmen. And if we don't warn people, then, uh, you know, if the sword comes and it you know, it kills someone there, the blood of those who have been killed will be counted on the watchman if he did not say. But if he said, their blood will be counted on themselves, okay? So I just said that if you don't believe the gospel now, do you think you're going to survive the mark of the beast? Is it really going to be possible? Absolutely not even possible, okay? So let's also see Revelation 19, 20. What will happen to these saints, the people who will refuse the mark of the beast? Revelation 19, verse 20, it says, uh, and the beast was taken and with him, the false prophet, actually, this is a, uh, yes, let, 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 let's read first before I explain. The beast was taken and with him, the false prophet that wrought miracles before him. So the false prophet will be bringing a lot of miracles, a lot of miracles. He will deceive people with miracles. That's why I try to say so much. When you see people are doing a lot of miracles and, uh, you know, be, be be always very 
careful about, you know, a lot of miracles. And uh, when you go to a church, it's all prophecies, miracles, receive this, receive that. My friend, Satan is able to do miracles as well. And uh, he's, he has his servants. You see, the Bible says uh, the devil disguises himself as the angel of light. No marvel, even his ministers, they also look in the same way. They deceive themselves as if they are angels of light. They will say good things. And you see, when I'm deceiving someone, I will not say everything false. I will say some, you know, good, true thing. And I will say some false thing. And I will change something. And if it's the gospel that I'm telling you, I will, I will not really uh, tell you, oh, believe in Satan. No. I will tell you, you see, there's another different way of going to the same Jesus, you know. I will twist, even when Paul was speaking, he said, uh, uh, do not, you know, do not go to the people who will be giving you another gospel. He says, even if an angel from heaven or us or anyone else comes preaching another gospel, which is as we have not preached right now, let him be a cast. And he continued and said, which is not really another gospel. They're not telling you to go and believe Satan. They're not telling you to believe what or some lizard, some something, but they are just twisting the gospel of God. You know, they are twisting that gospel and, and they give it some taste, some something that you cannot really explain what it is. They, that's exactly what they twist. So when they twist it, these are angels. They're giving the angels of darkness. These are doctrines of devils that they give you. And at the end of the day, you find yourself you're not being saved because you are listening and you are only going to church to receive miracles, to receive prophecies, you know, receive this and that. And, uh, you know, all those things that people go for nowadays. They, they, nobody, many of these people, I'm not saying nobody because uh, definitely there are so many people who go to hear the true gospel, but very few people, actually out of 100%, you'll find 80 people in a church are the only ones who really understand the gospel. Just if you want to understand this is true, just go to, a, to your church, any church just around. Ask someone, how is someone saved? Start from the pastor. Many, 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 many people do not know. Just a couple percentage of people understand how people are saved through faith in the blood of Jesus Christ. But most of the people they just believe their things. They believe, you know, I have done this. I've given to the poor. I've done baptism, especially baptism is the major, major thing that people think. Many people, they say, because I've been baptized, I know I'm going to heaven. But it's purely not true. It's not true. That's another gospel. And, and those are the lies that the false prophet and his ministers will be lying to people. They will lie to people and lie to people until this day comes and they have been left by the rapture. And this is what will be happening. And the beast was taken. Revelation 19 20 and the beast was taken with him the false prophet that wrote miracles before him and with which he deceived them that had received the mark of the beast you see people will be deceived all right deceived to receive the mark of the beast and them that worshipped his image these both were cast alive into the lake of fire burning with brimstone listen to this now there is a great deception which is happening right now currently are you seeing what is happening in the world right now? Are you seeing the deception? Are you seeing what this verse is saying? That the mark of the beast, people will be deceived into getting it. And they will be threatened into getting it. But they will not be forced into getting it. Are, are you seeing the difference? The mark of the beast, people will be deceived to get it. You'll be lied to because you loved uh, false things, you loved false doctrine, you loved false churches, you loved false prophecies, you loved uh, going to places where people will just keep on telling you lies and lies, what your itching ears want to hear. So because you loved these false doctrines and these lies, what is going to happen? You will be deceived into getting the mark of the beast. A simple thing. The Bible tells us, you see, the false prophet that wrought miracles before him with which he deceived, listen, he deceived them that had received the mark of the beast. So there are people who will be deceived into getting this mark of the beast. You see, there are so many people in church who are saying, you see the mark of the beast, we will see it and we know it. And then it's, it's like they think the mark of the beast will, will have a label written mark of the beast. Yes, that will be during the second half of the tribulation. But in the first half of the tribulation, many people will get this mark of the beast. Many, 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 many people will be deceived. They will think that is the truth. 
and they'll be deceived. Verse 21, and the remnant was slain with the sword of him. Who are the remnant? The people who did not receive that mark. They were slain with the sword of him that sat upon the horse, which sword proceeded out of his mouth, and all the falls were filled with their flesh. So many, 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 many people who will refuse to take this mark of the beast, they will be slain. Their heads will be cut off. By, by who? By, uh, by him that sat upon the horse. You remember, the Bible tells us about the four horsemen of the apocalypse. The four horsemen, there'll be the first one is the white horse. The white horse, the one who sat on this white horse, he was conquering and conquering and conquering. And he had a crown on his head. <laughs> do, do you know what, you know, this C thing is called? Just go and research in, uh, in Spanish. The word, you know, the one which starts with C and ends with D. That word alone, just go and Google, just go to Google, eh? Google search. It says in Spanish, translate it exactly what it means. Yeah? What it means in, in Spanish. It basically means a crown. <laughs> it means a crown. So if it means a crown, are you seeing the picture? Are you connecting the dots? Are you connecting the dots? He had a crown on his head and a bow and some, you know, things that he was, what, what, what do you use a bow for? A bow, you know, a bow and arrow to shoot some things. He was shooting some things on people. <laughs> this is so amazing. Like, this is so, so amazing when you see what exactly this uh, Antichrist will be doing. He'll be shooting some things into people, shooting and shooting and shooting and shooting. And you are there looking at this thing that you're really, really letting people, letting those people shoot on you. Can't you just think? Can't you just ask yourself and tell yourself, we are almost there, my friends. All right. So this, this Antichrist will conquer and conquer and conquer and continue conquering. And he'll have, be having this crown, this crown, okay? And he'll be shooting some things. This is really important to understand. Really important to understand. All right. So you have to understand that accepting is not being is is not being forced it is being deceived or you know threatened all that will happen so number 3 the antichrist must first be revealed be, before people uh, the antichrist must first be revealed before people will be able to uh, uh, to start fully worshiping him he has to be first revealed. The Bible tells us uh, about this. Let me show you. Let's go to 2 Thessalonians. I want to show you exactly what will happen because the Antichrist has to first be revealed. Um, let me show you. Verse 3, 2 Thessalonians 2, verse 3. It says, let no man deceive you by any means. For that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first, and that the man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, who opposes and exalts himself and all that. So he will be revealed. He will be revealed. Now, this way of saying he'll be revealed, it means there's a certain way that he'll be seen Absolutely. If if I'm hiding something, for example, like uh, my sister was having a, a birthday and uh, so there's a cake here, which was hidden here and uh, she put here on my table. So revealing this, it's opening. Who knew that there was a cake here if it was just put there? Nobody could have known, but it was revealed. So the same, same way, the Antichrist will be revealed in people. It will, he will be revealed in the hearts of men. <laughs> Look at this. Look at this. Let me explain something. See what the Bible says. Let no man deceive you by any means. For that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first. So people will fall away from what? From grace and from faith. From grace and from faith. There are so, 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 so many people who will fall away from grace? Falling away from grace is falling away from the, the position you are. If you are, if there was a building and it was really flooding and you're on top of a roof, you're at a position whereby if a chopper comes and if those people are rescuing, people can come and they rescue you, at least you cannot die. But now when you fall away from that roof into the water, what happens? 
there's no chance for you to be saved. You will drown in the water and you will die. So people will fall away from the from the grace. How? The only way you can fall away from grace and fall away from a position where you can be saved is if, if you take something which will change the way you think, because with your mind, because the Bible tells us it is from our minds that we are able to understand the gospel so that after we understand, we believe from our hearts. So if something changes the way you understand, it means then you cannot make a right choice. Are you seeing this uh, C ending with D uh, thing that we're having right now? Uh, <laughs> it's, it's basically something which is changing the way people are thinking. Have you seen it changing the way people are thinking? I was just, I was just going through different screenshots and different pages uh, uh, where people are saying, you know, the side effects of uh, this C thing. And uh, the, the, most of the people are saying that my dad took this thing and uh, all of a sudden he's thinking differently. The things that he once believed, they know, don't make sense to him. Others are saying, I don't know what's wrong with my brother. After he took this thing, he, he cannot think straight. And I've also seen so many pictures of different people who have gotten, you know, sores in their, in their body. They have gotten sores in their, in their bodies and their legs and others, even in their eyes. Just go on my posts, eh? on, on my Facebook post down there. You will see so many posts have, have posted about the effects of this uh, uh, C thing. And you wonder and you ask yourself, is there somewhere in the Bible where it says that people will get this sores? Yes, the Bible says, whosoever will get uh, the mark of the beast, they will have painful sores. This is absolutely so, so ridiculous that people don't see this, that people are just sitting down and uh, assuming and they're saying, oh, I don't care, I don't care. Let me tell you this thing, the Bible has said, the Antichrist has to first be revealed in you see, our bodies are the temple of God. So if you fall away and you take something which will change the way you think and the way you behave, and also it takes you from being a human being to maybe something else, you become another animal. Now, do you think Jesus came to save a robot? Do you think Jesus came to save something else? Why did Jesus come into personalities? He came as a son of man and as a son of God because he was coming to save men as God. Are you seeing the point? He did not come as a son of robot. He came as a son of God and as the son of man so that he can save humanity. And you, you go and change your physique and you change the way you are and think, oh, maybe. And also in uh, 2 Thessalonians uh, verse 4, it says, who opposes and exalts himself above all that is God. This Antichrist, when he gets in, he will exalt himself. He want to be worshipped, nothing else, above everything that is called God or that is worshipped, so that he as God seated in the temple of God, showing himself that is God. Now, look at this. If you get this C thing, when you get this C thing, what happens? It changes the way you think. It changes your personality to become someone else. And then after you become someone else, look, the Bible tells us we are who? We are the temples. Our bodies are the temples of the Holy Spirit. And Christ dwells in us. We, this is the house of the Holy Spirit. So the Bible is very clear. It tells you, don't you know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit and that he dwells in you? Do you see the point? So Satan wants to sit in the body, in the temple, this temple, he wants to sit here. And are you seeing why these people are really deceiving people? And people can see, they, they are, almost everybody right now in the planet can know there's some, there's some lie in some way with these guys. They're saying one thing, they're meaning one thing, they're saying one thing, they're meaning one thing. And at the end of the day, when you look at them and you say, hmm, there's something really wrong. Here, there's something wrong. I don't really understand where it is, but there's something wrong. But you know it's wrong, and you cannot go and do your own research. You're just sitting down and you're saying, let it be the way it will be. Let it be. You know, it is what it is. It's okay. But remember, your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. Your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. So if you let something else sit in that temple, 
and you are at a point of grace whereby you could have been saved. Because a true Christian, I don't believe that a true Christian is deceived. Someone who has read the Bible, the Bible says, search the scriptures daily. So if you're reading the Bible very well, then I'm very sure absolutely 100% you cannot be deceived. And because the Bible says the Holy Spirit will teach you this Bible. He will teach you. So if the Holy Spirit is teaching you because he's inside you, you're being saved. He's teaching you. He will tell you, don't take this C thing. When you take this uh, C stuff eh, that you're being given, then it will change who you are. And the Holy Spirit will speak in you and he will tell you because he's the one who teaches you this. But if you don't have the Holy Spirit, you will be deceived and you will go and take it. When you take it, what is going to happen? You will fall from the point of grace where you could have been saved. And what's going to happen when you fall down, then there's no more grace for you. You cannot be saved. That's why the Bible said, whosoever will take the mark of the beast will not be able to repent. His deal is sealed up to eternal fire. Absolutely, 100%. If you take the mark of the beast straight to hell, there's no way. There's no other return because you don't have your own mind. You don't have your own uh, natural human being, you know, nature. You are a robot. You're something else. You're another animal. You're something else because you have taken the mark of the beast. So it means there is no more grace for you. You're done. You're complete. You have sold your soul to the devil. So if you sold your soul to the devil, then what's next? What's next? Eternal fire. But if you could have stayed and not fallen away and stayed in that point of grace where you can be get salvation even if it's just you're gambling up and down and trying to tell god please show me the truth show me what what can i do what can i do show me the truth for sure 100 percent. the bible says ask and it shall be given unto you seek and you will find you know ask tell god god please i don't know what is true I don't know if Kate is saying the truth or these people are saying lies or whatever is happening, but please God, I'm seeking the truth. Please show me the truth. You said in your Bible that ask and you shall, uh, uh, you shall be answered, you know, and seek and you shall find. Please God, I'm seeking the truth. Tell me the truth. For sure, hundred percent God will show you the truth. And seeking does not mean God, please help me. And then you sit down. No, read, you, read the word of God. Go on YouTube. There's YouTube right now. Just go and research what's the gospel. Click on many, many videos. What is the gospel? What is the gospel? And you'll hear different explanations and you will see people trying to tell you because God will always provide someone to tell you the truth. God will always provide someone to tell you the truth. Please do not just sit down and be deceived. Don't be deceived because deception is coming in a very, 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 very big way. And Satan will demand to be worshipped and he will not want any other person to be worshipped except him. All right? Nothing else. He, didn't, he will not even want anyone else to be worshipped. All right? Now, the temple of the Holy Ghost, this is very important to understand about this. Our bodies being the temple of the Holy Ghost. Now, himself, Satan, he will want to sit in that temple and show himself that he's God. Look at verse 5 of 2 Thessalonians. I love this chapter. It's really, really beautiful. It says, remember ye not that when I was yet with you, I told you these things. Paul is saying, you remember what he, he told the people? You remember what Paul told the people? That your bodies are the temple of the Holy Spirit. You remember what he wrote in his earlier epistles? That, hey, your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. And he reminds you right now, he tells you, don't let anything uh, absurd or something weird come into your body. How now? It's the temple of the Holy Spirit. And you're there and saying, mm, let it be, let it be, let it be. And uh, the funny thing is that this thing will be brought unto you. You'll be deceived into taking it. And you'll be sitting there and asking yourself, am I deceived or am I not deceived? Not knowing that the Bible told you such the scriptures. Remember, Revelation 13. 16, look at this. Revelation 13, verse 16. Verse 16. Uh, let, let me just from uh, start from verse 15. Listen to this, okay? And he had power, who? The Antichrist. He had power to give life unto the image of the beasts, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. So there's an image, an image of something which will be uh, given to these people. 
and they'll be forced to worship it. Now, look at this, verse 16. And he causeth all, he will cause everyone, both small and great. Who are great people? Every person who claims, hey, I'm a great man, I've done this, I'm a philosopher, I'm a lawyer, this, I'm that. We know, we know, we know who is who and everything. All those great, both small and great, rich and poor. If you think your wealth will give you some connections, my friend, you're really deceived. If you think because I have some money in the bank is going to help me and uh, have some connection somewhere, people know this and people tell me this and I'm a great guy here, I'm a great guy there and blah, 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 blah. Oh my goodness. You're really, really lying to yourself. Free and bond. Now, bond are the people in jails and people who are held in some, you know, uh, correctional facilities. Those people, they will all be among this. So you will not say, oh, because we are, we, we are in jail, we are safe. No, you're not safe. Free and bond. Free is anyone who is loitering and moving around free. is not jailed. Eh? To receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads. Everyone will receive a mark. He will force everyone to receive a mark. But of course, Christians will not get this mark because, you know, uh, furthermore, uh, if when it really gets, th th this is my thought. Let me give you my thought. This is my thought. You can agree or disagree. It's, it's all up to you. This is what I think. First, the devil will try to deceive people into getting this mark. He will deceive them through, you know, propaganda and a lot of stuff. He'll deceive and deceive and deceive because the Bible says he will conquer and conquer and continue conquering. And when the, this, uh, the four horsemen of apocalypse, he, the, that first horseman, the, the, the Antichrist who is on the white horse, he will try to fake and fake and fake and deceive people. So I think my two cents is that this guy, first he will try to deceive people and he will give the deceived people the mark of the beast. Then by the time this deception is getting deeper and deeper and now people are starting to understand that this is true and uh, you know and uh, most of the people have been deceived but the christians are still running up and down they don't want deception and that they are you know the the persecution has not really come that much i think that's when the rapture is going to happen i don't know i i feel that that the rapture is going to happen after you know a lot of deception has happened because there's this verse in second thessalonians which i've just read to you it has to happen the falling away has to happen first people have to fall away and the falling away means they will have to fall from those people who have always been in these mega, mega churches and going to look for prosperity, going to look for these kind of things. Men, they will fall away big time, big time. They'll be deceived because they don't listen to the Bible. They don't read the word of God. All they do is just go to a church and look at the, you know, look at the screen where their papa is writing, you know, is writing some Bible verses. And all they can do is speak it, papa, whatever he wants you to see. You don't know even what he has written in the, in the, in the TV screen if he has edited those things. You can't even carry your Bible. And uh, very, very soon, even these uh, Bibles, most of the apps will be deleted. Do you know that? Have you seen, uh, have you seen, there's, a, there's an, um, an app. I mean, there's a video that I posted on my Facebook. Just scroll down on my Facebook, Keith Mwoki. Uh, You will see that right now they have, they, there is a bill. I think it's in Canada, or if I'm not wrong. It's in Canada. And they're saying that if this bill passes, Bibles will be deleted. <laughs> They'll be deleted over. So there will be no, if, if your Bible is on an app, my friend, you're doomed. You have no Bible. And very, very soon you will find even these hard copy Bibles, these hard copy Bibles, they will start to be scarce and scarce. So this is the time that you can buy a Bible, buy two, three, four, five Bibles, just put them somewhere. Remember one thing, the houses of, uh, you know, Christians right now, your houses will be probably the houses where the tribulation saints will take refuge. So if you have a Bible, just put it somewhere, just write the gospel somewhere, you know, how people can be saved that time. Of course, it's not through the blood of Jesus. Now it's through your blood, yeah, through their blood during the time of tribulation. Just write some notes somewhere and just pin it somewhere and put some Bibles in different places. You never know, they will help some people buy some Bibles because this will come, this will come. Let's continue verse 17, Revelation 13, 17. 
and that no man might buy or sell save he that has had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. <laughs> my, my people, my people, my people. Look at that verse. That no man might buy or sell. Are you seeing something happening right now in the world? And people are saying you cannot go anywhere to go and do anything. You cannot travel. And soon it will be you cannot buy or you cannot sell unless you have taken the seat. Are you seeing? Are you seeing it happening? Look at Israel. Israel right now, <laughs> you cannot enter even into a mall. Just there is no place where they are showing the news because they are hiding and they, you know, they are, they, they are concealing everything from Israel. They don't want people to see. But it's happening right now. They cannot buy. They cannot sell. They cannot go to the beach. They cannot just scroll on my Facebook again. See, I've posted a lot of evidences of what is happening in the world right now. They cannot buy. They cannot sell. Save he that has taken the what? The same thing. Unless you have taken that, you can't do anything. Look at, and it's coming, it's global. But I'm so excited when I hear this because the Bible tells us when you see these things start to happen, look up because your redemption draws nigh. Anytime you can be redeemed from this fake body, this, sometimes I always argue with friends of mine, hey, Keith, you don't go to the gym, you don't. I'm not saying going to the gym is bad, but I tell them, man, this body will be given another new body. Huh? So don't worry about this thing. This, this, just, this is just a fake fallen body. I'll be given another new body. And I'm so excited about that. And uh, I try to tell people, guys, please, please, please look. Look, the Bible is saying. Now, there's a component in this C thing that we're being given right now, which will make uh, the people to be able to know who has taken the C. Oh, and who has not taken it? Now, this component, which is being put in the in the V, all right, the one that you you know you're being uh, it's being put inside you. That thing, the, it has some light, a small light that you cannot see it with your visible eyes. You cannot see it with your naked eyes. You know these naked eyes, but there's a small substance which is called Lucifer S. All right. And I don't want to say this because I don't want to be, be, be censored. All right. Now, Lucifer, Ace, look at that. Is this not what the Bible is saying? Look, and that no man might buy or sell, save he that has had the mark or the name of the beast. What is the name of the beast? Lucifer. Are you seeing that? Are you seeing these things? Except you have the name of the beasts. Who is the beast? The beast is Satan, Lucifer. So now you put in something which has the name of the beast. And you're still there saying, oh, it's not the mark of the beast or the number of his name. Do you know the registration for this C thing? The patent number, the official registration of this V that you're being given. Do you know the registration number? Can I shock you right now? It's actually 2020-060606. Zero is not a number. Just put it 666. Then the number of his name. The number of his name. Now look at the, the, the next verse, number 18. Here is wisdom. Let him that has understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, and his number is 603 score and six. That is 666. Look at it. Are you, are you getting some clues here? Are you seeing something which is happening? And the Bible is so clear about this. It says the, the devil will deceive people into getting this. He will deceive them, deceive them, deceive them, you know, conquering and conquering and conquering. You conquer through deception. You conquer through wars and rumors of wars. You conquer through a fear. You conquer through different ways. That's how you conquer, okay? That's how you conquer. So if you're conquering through fear, deceptions, lies, you know, fake things and fake stuff, that's how he will conquer. And he will conquer and conquer. And he will have a crown on his head. I said the C. C, you know, that word, the C word, 
yeah, which is ending with one nine. I don't want to speak that because of censoring. The C word, just go and translate that into Spanish. It means a crown. <laughs> my friend, my friend, this is really exciting. You can share this video. Keep on, share this video so that other people can also hear. I'm not after the views. I'm after people hearing the word of God and be able to open up their eyes. Just share to as many places you can be able to share. Share, 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 share. You never know who, who will hear this and, you know, he'll be saved from scam. You see, he will have a crown, a crown, and he will have a bow, and he'll be shooting things. What is being shot? What is being shot right now? What is being shot? He will have a bow and shooting things, shooting things, and shooting things. In Man, this is, this is so precise. You see, the Bible is so precise, 100%. And by the time you realize how much the Bible is so precise, if you're deceived, you will not know these things. Let me show you this. I was, uh, I was showing you about this deception and why Christians will not be able to take the mark of the beast because they have the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit has taught you the scriptures and he opens up your eyes so that you can see. But someone who is not saved, he not, does not have the Holy Spirit, so he cannot see the Holy Scriptures. And they cannot be lifted up. You see, this is a living word. This is not a novel. This is not a dictionary. This is a living word. And that is why, you see, people read the Bible over and over for 10 years, 20 years, and they are still reading the same book over and over again. And every day, this book comes alive because of the Holy Spirit. But when you read it without the Holy Spirit, it's just any other book. You're just seeing words, ink, and paper. But the Holy Spirit teaches you these things so that you cannot be lied. The Bible says, do not be ignorant of the devil's devices. This is one of the devices. Do not be ignorant of the devil's devices. Why are you ignorant? Why, why, why are people just sitting down and just say, oh, you know, let's take it. Yeah, yeah let's trust the government. Let's trust uh, the government, let's trust. Don't you trust your scientists? Don't you put your trust in, uh, you know, uh, the, the, the gates of hell guy and, and uh, the other doctor, the false doctor? Don't you put your trust in these guys? These are just agents. No marvel, Satan disguises himself as the angel of light. He's coming to bring peace. He's coming to bring, you know, we will heal you. We have your solution. If you don't believe in us, you're going to die. You're going to die. Okay. Oh. The Bible says life begun, begin, uh, belongs to God. You belong to God. So if they tell you you're going to die, <laughs> the Apostle Paul says to live is Christ and to die is gain. I don't care if, you, if, if, I, if I die. If I die and uh, I know I'll wake up in heaven. The Bible, uh, Paul still says in the Bible that uh, uh, he says to be absent from the body is to be present with God. So I know if I close my eyes right now and I wake up, I wake up in heaven. Because the Bible has told me so. The Bible is so precise, so, so precise on what it's saying. And you keep on saying that you're, you're scared. Oh, this guy said, if I don't take this, I'm going to die. I'm going to expose others. I'm going to do this. What about yourself? Don't you think about yourself? They tell you, you know, save others. What about yourself? Can't you think? Can't you open your eyes and just say, these people, they want us finished. They want us finished. They want to lie to us. The deception, he, the Antichrist will conquer and conquer and conquer. And he's conquering right now. Huh? He's conquering so much through lies and deceptions and threats and, you know, uh, false stories, false news and many, many other things. And he's lying and lying and lying, conquering and conquering. Think about that. Look at this. <laughs> Hold this. Verse 6 of 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, it says, And now you know what withholdeth that he might be revealed in his time. What, does, what is withholding the Antichrist from being revealed? The falling away. When people will fall from that grace, they change their bodies into something else. And they become some zombies, you know? They have shown us the movie uh, Zombie Apocalypse. Why are they showing us this movie? What is a zombie? A zombie is something which uh, is walking, but is dead. Dead from inside, but walking. 
you know, walking dead. Have you heard about walking dead? They have shown you, even these people, they are so confused that they even show you in movies how you will look in the future when you take these things. They show you how you will be looking like. They tell you, this is who you will be. This is how we will make you look like. And you're there saying, oh, I trust these guys. Please give me one. Please book one for me. Book one for me. I need to receive it once it comes to our county. I want to receive it. You're a big fool. A big fool. A big fool. Why am I calling a fool? Because a fool says in his heart, there's no God. You don't trust God. He told you that I'm your healer. I will heal you. Then you don't trust him. You say, oh, no, there is no God. I don't care about what God is saying. Let me trust my scientists. You're a big fool. What withholdeth for me in being revealed is that that falling away when it happens and the Holy Spirit who was wavering around you. You see, before you're saved, the Holy Spirit is just around. He's just around. Sometimes he, he, he shouts to you. He tells you, hey. Hey, listen to this. Hey, listen to this. Because the Bible says the Holy Spirit draws us to Christ. He's drawing you close to Christ. When maybe you're walking and you see a poster written, Jesus saves. The Holy Spirit tells you, hey, look at, look at, look at uh, on the left side. And you see, it's Jesus saves. Hey, somebody else tells you, the Holy Spirit is drawing you close. He's not inside you yet, but he's drawing you close because you're in a place where you can be saved. You're under grace. You're on a grace time. All right, you are up high somewhere. But now what happens when you fall from grace? When you all of a sudden take something which changes the way you think, the way you do things and changes your, uh, your human nature to something else. There's no more grace. The Holy Spirit, it gets away. So right now, the Holy Spirit is being withheld. Is the one who is withholding this falling away. I mean, this uh, Satan from being revealed, this Antichrist. Because of what? He's wavering around the people, around the people, telling them there's still time for you. You can be saved. You can be saved. You can be saved. There are many, many. Listen to this. Listen to that. He's telling you, please, you can be saved. You can be saved. You can be saved. But people don't want to hear that. They're saying, oh, please give us lies. Give us lies. Tell us how we will prosper. Tell us how we'll buy new cars. Tell us how. Please don't tell us how we should repent. Don't tell us that Jesus loves us and that we are sinners. No, no, no. Tell us, you know. Tell us that we, 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 we will get new cars and new houses and our marriages will work and everything. And, you know, nowadays churches are motivational talks. And the moment you realize that you've been being lied to and because people loved lies, this is what's going to happen. Look at verse 8. All right. Verse 7, actually. For the mystery of iniquity. What is a mystery? Something that has been hidden. The mystery of iniquity does already work. It has already been working. Have you seen how many uh, children have died in Africa and India and North Africa and other places and even in Europe who have died from taking, you know, V's, the V's stuff? Have you seen how many kids have been dying? Have you seen how much, uh, you know, medicines have killed people? Do you know what's the name of medicine? It's called uh, we, we call uh, the, them pharmaceutical, you know, pharmacy, pharmacy, pharmaceutical drugs. And when you translate that into Greek, it's called pharmacia. Pharmacia in the Bible is mentioned and is known as sorcery. Sorcery is basically pharmacia. Have you ever seen the logo of these guys? The logo, it has some snakes which look like this. <laughs> and you look at the hospital logos. They have some snake deceivers, deceivers. And the Bible says, who deceived? The Satan who deceived people with their sorcery, with his sorceries, he will be bound and thrown into the lake of fire at the end of the day. So now when you look at this, there's been a lot of sorcery. The mystery of iniquity has already been there. It's been working. It's been deceiving people and killing people. You go to a hospital to be treated, you know, stomach ache. And after stomach ache, tomorrow you, head, you have a headache. After a headache, tomorrow, the other day, you have your hand is, you know, bring problem. After your hand, your leg, your leg, cancer, what? You're finished. And all they want you to, it, all they want from you is you finished. And you, you're there saying, oh, I trust these guys. No, 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 God, don't tell me anything. Look at the pastors who are saying, you know, come here, I pray for you. Jesus heals right now. 
they're in the bushes. Oh, this thing will finish us. I even saw another pastor wearing, I don't know how many, how many masks. He's wearing like 10. And he's like there. It is a big bishop with a big belly and he's walking and saying, oh, I'm fearing this thing. Oh, please, please, where, where, you know, wash your hands, hair sanitize, do everything. Look at them. And just the other day they were saying, come here, lay hands on you. I heal even cancer. Where are they right now? Say, so, oh, there's no God on this. Uh, come on, God, God, God. No, God, stay away. They are fools, reprobates. Huh? And the, the mystery of iniquity does already work. Only he now letteth, will let, the Holy Spirit will let, until he be taken out of the way. When you tell the Holy Spirit, leave me, I'm going to destroy myself. I don't care. Leave me, leave me, stay away. When you take this and you say, now I want the government to think for me. Because once you take this, you can't think right. You're controlled. Your mind is controlled. You can't think right. The moment you say the Holy Spirit, stay away from me. Let the government think for me. Let these top scientists think for me. Then he will say, okay, I hold my peace. I've been trying to push you, trying to push you to salvation. You've refused. It's okay. Look at verse 8. 2 Thessalonians 2, 8. And then shall that wicked, that wicked one, the wicked in capital W, and that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. That wicked one now will be revealed. You told the Holy Spirit, stay away from me. I don't want to hear what you're saying. I don't want to hear what you're saying. Go away from me. Let me get this and let the the scientists think for me. I don't deserve thinking. I don't deserve to have a rational mind. I don't deserve to be a human being. Let me change myself and become something else. And now the moment you say that, whew, he goes away. You fall away from grace. And then now the wicked one is revealed in you. You become so evil. You can, you can basically murder someone with your hands. You can basically go and shoot someone and kill him on the spot and you don't care. You see, you don't care. You will do it the way you want. Because now the wicked one is when being revealed in you. Have you seen some people you ask, does this person have a heart actually? Why does he have to do this? Look at this gates of hell guy. This, you know, the, the main, the usual suspect of this thing who is called the gates of hell. Now, let me tell you, look at him. People are asking, does this guy have conscience? Does he even think right? Is it, how can you kill people like this? You know why? Because he has already sold his soul to the devil. He has sold his soul to the devil. He has let the, that wicked one to sit in his temple, which is supposed to be the temple of God. And he has sat there and he's become God in his life. And right now, the wicked one has been revealed inside him. And now, it's not him who is doing these things. It's Satan. So when you allow Satan to do the same to you, what is going to happen? The wicked one will be revealed in you. And you will be strangling your own child like this with your bare hands and kill and finish. Have you seen people in the news? You hear somebody kill his mother, father, children, brother, everyone. And he finished them and you're just like, ah. Yeah, you know, you see these people, they deserve to die. You see, because the wicked one is inside them. is the one who is doing these things. It's not them. It's not them. It's not them. Now, see verse 9, what's he saying? Verse 9. It's saying, even him, even him, who is coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders. The Antichrist will come with a lot of signs, wonders, lying wonders. You know, a lot of miracles and power. He will have a lot of power. You'll be able to say something powerfully. You're like, oh, I'm really scared. The Bible tells us, fear he that can destroy your body and soul in hell. Who is Jesus? Do not fear anyone who can only destroy your body. You know, Satan and these world systems, they can only destroy your body. They can destroy your body. Fine, they can finish you up. But the Bible tells us, don't fear these guys. Fear only the one who can destroy your body and soul in hell. That's the only one that you should fear. Fear is not from God. 
You keep on fearing and fearing and fearing and you don't stand up for what you believe. Right now, we cannot change the world. The world is going, you know, the Bible says the world will wax cold and cold and cold. And that is true. The Bible says that. So it cannot be changed. Even if you pray and you go to the mountain and fast uh, 10 days, 100 days, nothing can be changed. The world will wax cold and cold. Don't be lied by anyone. Those who say seven mandate and you don't know what, and there'll be a great, you know, uh, ministry which will happen. And you, I don't know, revival. Those are liars. Tell them to go and read their Bibles. Because the Bible is saying that the world will wax cold and cold. And the deceivers will be showing great power, signs and lying wonders. Have you gone to churches nowadays? Especially these prosperity churches? All these do from morning to evening is prophesy. Oh, I prophesy your car is coming. I prophesy your house is coming. I pro and you're there sitting, listening to these deceivers. You better stay home. Just stay home. Why should you waste your time listening to these deceivers? They even themselves. Because the Bible says the world will grow, uh, you know, wax uh, cold and cold. People being deceived and deceiving others. Even most of these pastors, they are deceived themselves. Those who are prosperity pastors, they are good pastors. I'm not saying all pastors are bad, but there are so many who are deceived. Why do you think the Bible says that narrow is the way that leads to salvation? Narrow is the way. And few are there who find it. Very few people find it. Do you think when you look at these mega churches and mega and mega and mega, all those people know the truth? Most of them are blind people leading other blind people. Really blind. It's like you're holding a blind man. Please take me to the market. He's blind. So both of you will enter into a ditch. So when you see a pastor who is just saying his things and he doesn't know the gospel, before you join a church, First, understand what is their basic understanding of salvation. Simple. If you cannot agree on salvation, then you can never agree on anything else. If you cannot agree on the basics of salvation, tell the pastor, tell me, what is salvation? How is someone saved? Oh, you see, believe in the Bible, hey, Jesus, hey. Those are half gospels, half truths. Believing in Jesus is true, but it's a half a truth. You have not told him the full gospel. You have not told him that how someone is saved through believing in the blood of Jesus, because it could have been your blood which was being shed at the cross, but Jesus shed his blood for you. And Romans 3.25, it tells us, in whom God has set forth, he set him forth at the cross to be a propitiation through faith in his blood. The only way he can propitiate your sins is if you have faith in his blood. But then now many, many pastors are telling you, you know, give to the poor, help here, be baptized, you know, come to church often, listen to our sermons. It's like our church saves you. If you cannot agree on the basic doctrine of salvation, you should not even step your foot in that church. Stay away, stay away. You rather stay home and watch uh, preachings from YouTube. Other people who understand what they're saying. Why? Because the falling away is coming. People are being deceived by signs and lying wonders and fake miracles in church. Every day people are rolling and rolling, removing snakes and removing snakes. What kind of snakes are you removed? Do you think a, a saved person can be demons possessed? No, no. <laughs> How can you be demon possessed and you're saved? How can a saved person, every day you will see the same, same old people. The same people have been in the same church. Every day they are falling down. They are being told, you know, remove the snake. Remove, hey, hey you have been possessed in this and this and this. Remove this. The devil has hold on. Lies. If they are there, then they probably were not even saved because the Holy Spirit is sealed inside you. The Bible says the moment you're saved, the Holy Spirit is sealed inside you, sealed inside you. And he cannot go anywhere else. He's sealed unto the day of redemption. Until that day, he's sealed. Do you know what it means to seal something? You take an envelope, you put in something, some a letter inside, and you... You put, you, you know, some little saliva there and then you seal and you say, this will be opened in the day of redemption. Put it there. That's exactly what God 
uh, the father did. The moment you are saved by believing in God the Son, Jesus Christ, in what he did, then God the Holy Spirit comes inside you and is sealed. So how are you supposed to be? You have the Holy Spirit inside and then demons on the other side. Can God does not share glory. He does not share glory. So if you have the Holy Spirit, you can't have the, the evil spirit in one place. One has to chase the other. Are you getting the point? Verse 10 of 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. Listen to what it's saying. And with all deceivableness, there'll be a lot of deception. A lot of deception, which will make people receive the mark of the beast. Deception. And with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish. People who are perishing, they will be deceived. Why? Because they never loved the truth of the gospel. They never first got saved. They will be deceived. Why? Because they read the Bible and they just, when I, before I got saved, I used to read the Bible and I'm not understanding anything. I'm just seeing words and words and words. And Why is this Bible so confusing like this? Why is it that I open pages and I don't know to start on the last page, on the first? It's so confusing. It was like a, 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 a complicated sci-fi movie, but book that I was reading. But the moment I got saved like this, everything came to life. And when I look at a verse, it's like the verse is speaking to me and I'm like, I didn't know this. Oh, this is great. This is great. The, every time you're seeing new things and you're like, wow, the Holy Spirit teaches you. He teaches you. He teaches you this Bible. He teaches you. And the people who are not saved, they will be deceived because they cannot understand the Bible. The Bible says one thing. It says that the things of the spirit are spiritually designed. And unless you're saved, you can never understand the Bible. Unless you're saved, you just be looking at the Bible and you see another very heavy, complicated sci-fi book. But the things of the spirit are spiritually designed. When I look at this Bible, I am seeing it in a different way. I don't see the way I read my novels, the way I read uh, these dictionaries and the way I, I, I do all those. I, I don't see it that way. I see it so differently. Then the Bible tells us what will happen. These people will be deceived big time. <clears throat> with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish, because they received not the love of the truth that they may be saved. They never wanted the truth. These people never wanted the truth. And they'll be deceived big time. They will take the mark of the beast. Right now, look at the people who are saying, oh, this, this C, C, uh, thing which is in the world is not the mark of the beast. Look at everything. <clears throat> now, let's dissect this. And I want us to look at it in depth. Is this really the mark of the beast? Look at it. We may agree. And disagreeing does not mean we are not Christians. We can disagree on things. There are people who say the rapture will be pre-tribulation, mid-tribulation, post-tribulation. Fine. <laughs> they are all Christians. You can believe whatever you want to believe. The others who believe that you have to go to church on Sunday. Others, they believe that every day for them is Sunday. You can worship any day. Fine. Paul says, whoever one man raises up one day above the other and the other one raises all day, they are both justified in their own ways, you know, but they are all Christians. So we, we are not arguing about this. But now let's look at this and let's argue in a biblical way and ask ourselves. Number one, what makes this C thing to me to look as if it's the mark of the beast? Number one, that enzyme that when you get the V, all right, for it to be known that you have taken the V, because there are people who will take and others who are not taking, and they will start faking in malls and faking in different places. So how will these people know that you have taken the V or you have not taken the V? It is because there's a small enzyme in there, which is called Lucifer Ace, Lucifer Ace, all right? So when that, I, uh, that small enzyme is there, that, what is the work of that uh, Lucifer enzyme? It's to bring light so that when it's in there, when you've just gotten the V, there's a certain gadget you can put with a, sm with a specific app on the mobile phone. You can put like this and you can see it glowing. All right. So somebody can look and say, yeah, 
you have taken you have taken the v yeah you pass enter into the stadium yeah you have taken the v you you have taken the v yeah you you have not taken the v where is the light we don't see the light now the bible tells us who disguises himself as the angel of light satan who disguises himself satan and revelation 13 it tells us he will force everyone to have the name of the beasts, name of the beasts, or the number of his name. Now, what is the name of the beast? Lucifer. And you already have it here inside you. Use your brain. Number two, the number, the registration. I spoke about this just earlier, but I want to insist and explain to you. The registration, number of this V. It's 060606. Zero, six, zero, six. zero is not a number. So just remove the zeros. What do you get? 666. Six, six. Is that not what the Bible has said? And you're there still denying. Go and look at go and look at the, you know, the registrations, the patents. They're called the patent number. Is it not the one? After that, look at this. The moment you get the V. So many studies, just go and uh, join groups. There are so many groups. The, the, you know, the C19, you know, effects, you know, just go and search that. I don't want to say the word because they will censor me. The C, C, blah, 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 nine, and one nine, and then, you know, uh, the V effects. Groups, there are many groups out there where people are giving their experiences. They are giving their experiences and they're saying, what is happening? And my, my father took this, he died. This one took this, he died. This one took this, he was blind. This one took this, he got sores. Sores, the whole of his body, they have sores. They have sores in their mouths. They have sores in their bodies, those who have taken the V. What does the Bible say? That whosoever shall take the mark of the beast, he will have painful sores. Painful sores in everyone who will take the mark of the beast. Are you seeing some? Are you seeing something here? You will have painful sores, and already we are seeing anyone who has taken the V, this V, which is happening right now, they already have sores in their body. Painful sores. God, scroll down my pictures, uh, my my Facebook down on the timeline, and see for yourself. I've put in screenshots there. You will see for yourselves. So that you don't say, oh, this guy is just saying his own things. Another thing, apart from source, when you take this V thing, it changes who you are. We have had uh, so many people, you know, I don't want to mention their names. The owner of this platform that we are using right now, you know him. He starts with Mark. This, the owner of this platform that you are saying, there is a video that he put and he said that we're not really sure how it will be when we really change people's, you know, that D and whatever. I don't want to, you understand what I mean? I don't want to be censored. He's saying that this thing is going to change who you are. Now, let me ask you, do you think Jesus died for robots? That Jesus shed his blood so that all robots can be saved? Do you think he did? When you change yourself and you're no longer a human being, you're something else. Do you think Jesus died for that? Do you know the biggest sin which happened the time, uh, the days of Noah? The Bible tells us very well, as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be in the days when the Son of Man will be coming. Do you know exactly all the times of Noah? I did another video about that. What was happening? The fallen angels. They slept with the daughters of men. The, 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 the aliens, the ones that they call aliens and fallen angels, demons out there, they slept, they fused with the daughters of men, with human beings, and they gave birth to Nephilims, which are, which are also called giants. There were giants those days, which had no soul. They had soul. So if you give birth to, if you join, if you join uh, with, uh, you know, with demons, you put a demonic... Uh, D something. I don't want to say the name. You put the demonic seed and your seed there. What happens? You become something different. You're no longer a human being. And their destiny has already been set by God from heaven. Satan can never be saved. 
The fallen angels can never be saved. So if you make Satan your God, your father, then Jesus did not die for the lineage of Satan. He died for the lineage of Adam. So we are in the image of Adam. In the image of Adam. Genesis 5.3. And it says, and, and, and Adam lived, I don't know how many years, and he gave birth to Seth who was an, on his own likeness, in his own image, the image of man, the image of the fallen man. But Jesus came to save this fallen man. He came as the son of man and as the son of God. So that with the lineage of God, he was a sinless, perfect man. And with the image of man, he was coming to save the, the fallen man. But he was not coming to save uh, fallen angels or robots. So when you change yourself and you become a robot, then you have no more mercy waiting for you to be saved. And also, this thing that if you take it, it will change the way you think. I've seen so many, so many, so many people speaking and saying, my dad, he was just a good guy believing strongly on several things. And when he took this thing, he's like, he lost his mind. Everything that he believed on became obsolete. He cannot think straight. Yes, he's talking, he's eating, he knows me, everything, but he has a different mind. It's like something is controlling him. Do you see that? So if something is controlling your mind, do you think you can think right to get saved? That's why the Bible says, whoever will take the mark of the beast will not be able to be saved. You take the mark of the beast, you're doomed. It's over for you. It's over, absolutely over for you. There's no salvation anymore. There's no more grace. You're done. It's hellfire straight. What shall it profit you to gain the whole world and lose your soul? The Bible tells us. What shall it profit you? Just to get this, to have some few goodies, to go to the supermarket, you know, buy some food stuff, do some weird weird things others they say oh i had to take this because uh you see my children i had to take them for a holiday what shall it benefit you to take your children for a holiday what shall it benefit you to get this so that you can go to a shopping mall to watch a movie what shall it benefit you and you lose your soul what shall it benefit you what is, what what are you what will it benefit you nothing Nothing, absolutely nothing. And the, the Bible tells us anyone who will have the mark of the beast, anyone, when Jesus comes, you'll be thrown to the lake, to, to hell, alive, alive, boop, in. I don't know what will happen. I think, you know, the Bible says that when Jesus will come, there'll be a great earthquake. Probably that earthquake will open up hell down there and you'll be thrown alive there. Just because you need to buy, just because you need to watch a movie, just because you need to do a couple of things there. And then you say, give me, give me that mark. Give me that mark. Give me that mark. Bring it. For those who are saying this is not the mark of the beast, you're really fooled. You're really fooled. You're deceived. Let's see how much deception has happened to you. Second Thessalonians chapter two, verse 10. We were there. And with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish, deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish, because they received not the love of the truth that they might be saved. They didn't want the truth. Now, because you did not want the truth, God is saying, is going to say, fine, you don't want the truth. <coughs> it's okay. It's fine. I'll give you what you want. And then God sends them something because they did not want the truth. God does this. Listen to what God is going to do. He does not force himself to anyone. This is what God is going to do. Because you don't want the truth, all you want is lies. You're going to churches which are giving you lies every day, morning to evening. Receive your miracle. Receive your miracle. Yes, Papa. Yes, Papa. Continue saying Papa. Because you love the lies, this is what's going to happen. Verse 11. And for this cause, God shall send them a strong delusion that they should believe a lie. Are you seeing a lie which is there in the world right now? Are you seeing what is happening in the world? People are just given this and this and they don't do research and it's their bodies. Their bodies, they're not thinking, they're not using their minds because they are on a strong delusion. What is a strong delusion? A mental disorder. God will send them a mental disorder that they will believe a lie. Have you ever talked to someone and you tell them, 
this thing is this this road this bridge is broken i can see it you can see it just crack and there are cars two three four five cars you see them they have already drowned in this bridge please don't use this bridge and he tells you no I, I will go i will i know i believe myself strong delusion you can see it they tell you this road is broken the bridge is down people are falling down and they are entering into the water and they can't see the bible says they have eyes which don't see they have ears which can't hear have you seen like those uh, idols which are worshiped by the catholics which have eyes which cannot see when you see that mary sculpture it has eyes but they don't see and ears which cannot hear they're just there fake that is how people will be like those who did not want the truth god will send them strong delusion that they will believe a lie what lie is this that they're going to believe have you ever asked yourself about this what kind of lie is this this is a lie that is happening right now in the world people are believing a lie and they are falling away this is the time that we will see the true christians and the false ones this is the time that we are going to see the true pastors and the fake ones. The, the true pastors will tell people, don't get this thing. And the false one will tell them, you know, trust your scientists. Trust your government. Do whatever you can. Come on, don't be a lawless person. You see, all leadership comes from God. Please, please go and take this thing. The government say, all leadership comes from God. Do you remember Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? Did they go and bow to the image of uh, Nebuchadnezzar and he was a leader? Did that authority not come from God? There are things, there are times when you draw the line and you say, no, it's not possible. I'm not going to do this. The apostle Paul, what did he say? When he was told, don't preach in the name of Jesus. And he was being told by the government. He said, I rather obey God than man. God told me this. And here is where we draw the line. I rather obey God than man. I don't care your stories. I don't care whatever you say. I don't care about your ideas. I don't care about how much uh, research you guys have done. I don't care about uh, how much approved it has been done. If God has not approved it and he has said in his word that we should not take the mark of the beast, we should not take this mark. You see, people are waiting for a mark which will be written in that bottle, Mark of the Beast. And then now you see. But he has said, it will not be written Mark of the Beast. It will only, this is how you know it's the Mark of the Beast. It will have the name, the name of the beast, Lucifer. It will have the number of the name, 666. And it will have his image. I don't know how they put the image, but I'm very sure it's there. Now, already, it has two components there, which are already telling us is the mark. So what else are you waiting for, my friend? If you did not have the name of the beast, Lucifer, and did not have, you know, the number of his name, 666, then we could have said, probably it may not be. But you see, it has those. And you're still there telling people, no, 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 it's okay. No, it's okay. I, I even had another pastor, a friend of mine, who was telling me, oh, I don't want to hear. I've even booked mine. I'm ready to receive this thing. You see my body, when you pray, when you pray, when if I, if, if I put those things here and I pray for them and I anoint them, these people are really fooled by these anointing oils that they are buying in, in shops nowadays. Huh? You go and buy some cooking oil and come and then you anoint, you anoint some evil things and then you say, today I'm anointing these witches, with these witchcrafts. The Bible has said, huh? pharmaceutical pharmacia is sorcery. No, you come and anoint the sorcery and you say, I received this sorcery in Jesus' name. Is it going to work? Because the Bible says pharmacia, all right? Pharmacia, the one, the pharmacia. If you go and translate that, it means pharmacy, pharmaceutical drugs. So pharmacy, when you translate that from Greece, Greek, it it's basically means sorcery. Pharmacia is sorcery. So the Bible tells us the beast will deceive the people of the earth with these sorceries. So you see already, we have been told what kind of sorceries are this. The sorcery is already the pharmacia. Are you, are you seeing the point? 
And you're there saying, ah, no, I don't, I don't know. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I, I don't know what to explain, but this thing is so real, man. It's so real. It's so real. You have to stay away from this. Stay away from it. Don't be deceived by the small talks. You saw our president the other day. He was, stayed, he was asked, when are you taking this thing? He said, ah, do not force me. I'll take it when I want. I, I say also like him, don't force me. My God told me not to take it and I won't take it. You can imprison me. You can do whatever you want to do to me, but I'll stand with the truth. You will not give me this thing. Absolutely. Chop my head off, but then I will stand with the truth. The Bible has told us Christians will get persecution. And the Bible has told us when they take you, this is what the Bible says, when they take you, for those who are fearing, oh, they might take me, they might do this. The Bible says, when they take you and are leading you for persecution, for my name's sake, do not worry what you will say. Do not worry what you're going to say. At the moment when it's needed, the Holy Spirit will give you what to say. I'm like, oops, I didn't need to think about anything. Everything is sorted. If you, they pick me up or they pick another Christian, don't think about, don't worry about what you're going to say. The Holy Spirit will teach you what to say on that time when it comes. Don't worry. The Bible is this. And let's continue verse 12 of uh, 2 Thessalonians 2.12. It says, after they have uh, had a, uh, believed a lie, that they might all be damned who believed not the truth, but, it, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. You will believe a lie and then you'll be damned forever and ever. You, you, you receive this and you're damned. You cannot repent. You are out of your mind and you cannot be the same person that you've always been. And then you're damned forever. Many people will realize, oops, what have I just taken? What have I just taken? When it's too late. And these people will be crying every day and they'll be saying, oh, what did I do? What did I do? And now because they know they have, they have already sealed their deal. They have trampled on the blood of Jesus Christ. They have said, this blood of Jesus Christ is of none effect, doesn't make sense to me. The things of God, I don't care. Satan, come here, get inside. That's exactly what they will say. And the moment they say that, then the Holy Spirit will stay away and they'll fall away from grace and they will not be able to be saved. And that's it. My brothers, this thing, this thing which is here, you need to think so much before you before anything tell all your friends tell all your neighbors share the video let people know share more 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 i'm not i'm not here for the views views will not give me eternal life i'm here to make sure that people will hear the message and save their souls from deception and from going to hell that's the only way and the only thing you can do is to share tell people the truth tell people tell people tell people please don't don't even think about it. Don't even think about it. Believe the gospel. Believe the gospel. The gospel is found in 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. How that Christ died for our sins, was buried, rose again the third day according to the scriptures. How that Christ died. How did Jesus die? By shedding his blood on the cross. Why did he have to shed the blood on the cross? Because the shedding of blood, there's no remission of sins. So why was that important? Because we sinned and we were supposed to die. And when the blood is shed, then it means that animal or creature has died and you are supposed to die. But Jesus died for us so that now if we believe in his death, if we believe in the blood that he shed, then we are saved. You see the difference? You see the difference? That's exactly what the gospel is. The gospel is not all these uh, dilly dallies that people say, oh, have you not come to church today? We have not done this. Hey, I never saw you at the choir. That is not salvation. Salvation is not the things which I hear other churches saying, oh, you know, you have to be holy to be saved. Holy means what? Being separate. Separate from what? Doing things in a different way. So how do you do things in a different way? And the Holy Spirit is not in you. He's the one who teaches us all these things. All right. Is the Holy Spirit who teaches us these things. So unless the Holy Spirit is in you through salvation, you can never be holy. You can never 100% be holy. And there's a one great church led by someone who calls himself a mighty prophet. The mightiest prophet is really confusing people. He's letting people live under the law. We are no longer in the, under the law. We are now under grace. 
He's telling them, oh, women should wear long dresses, you know, uh, until your legs, you should have your head covered, which is good things. I'm not saying they're bad. They're good things. You should don't do this, don't do that, don't do this, don't do that. Uh, uh, come on, stop doing that, stop doing that. But he doesn't tell them how to be saved. He just tells them, don't do this, don't do. It's like he's telling them, get, you will get to heaven through your works. If your good works are really good, you will get to heaven. If you not do this good work, will go to hell this person is teaching people another gospel another gospel another gospel because the true gospel is believe in jesus christ what he did for you the finished work at the cross the moment you believe in jesus every every other work of cleaning you up and making sure that you don't do sinful things. That's the work of the Holy Spirit. Leave it for the Holy Spirit. He will correct you. He will convict you unto righteousness. Every day, you will start from a baby Christian. A baby Christian who is doing carnal things, still doing wrong things, but you, the Holy Spirit will shape you every day, He's shaping you, cleaning you up, cleaning you. You see, when a baby is so young, He's still peeing on himself, pooping on himself. He's still crying and doing, he, he, he cannot eat, cannot do this. They have to suck milk. That's exactly who you are when you get saved. You're still peeing on yourself. You're still lying. You're still doing wrong things. But the Holy Spirit cleans you up every day. You're a baby Christian. He cleans you up. He does, oh, he's crying. P put some milk. Do this, do this. Until you start growing in the spirit. You start growing, growing. And you stop, stop doing wrong things. So you don't stop, start by stopping uh, sin. You start by believing. When you believe, then the Holy Spirit cleans you up. You're a baby Christian. He cleans you up, cleans you up, cleans you up every day, preparing you, setting you up very well, setting you up very well. Until now, you start growing. You come from a carnal Christian, a baby Christian. You come now, you start becoming a spiritual, mature Christian who understands, I don't need to go and lie. I don't need to go and beat people. I don't need to go and kill because Jesus did something big on, uh, for me at the cross. I'm no longer the person I was in. I have a new mind. I have a new heart. I'm a changed person. I know who I am in Christ. I have been redeemed by his blood. I've been changed. I know who I am. The Lord has loved me now. And you're a different person. And all of a sudden you start feeling, wow, wow. The Holy Spirit. And the Bible says, walk in the spirit so that you may not fulfill the desires of the flesh. You may not fulfill the desires of the flesh. Walk in the spirit. Why? Because when you're saved, you're a baby Christian. You don't understand many things. Just follow what the Holy Spirit is telling you. He's inside you. When you want to go and steal, he tells you, really? Do you have to steal and you've been saved by the blood? Yes, you can still, and you will still go to heaven, but the Holy Spirit will clean you up from stealing three times, two times, one time. The next time you don't even want to see those staggering things from smoking and doing all those wrong things that you have always wanted to destroy and kill and destroy the body, uh, the, the temple of Christ. And every day is cleaning you up. You tell you, this doesn't make sense. This doesn't make sense. Stop fornicating. Stop doing this. Stop doing this. And you know, do what is right, convicting you. Do this is right. This is right. This is right. You go on. By the time you realize, you've already become a true spiritual Christian. So don't take this thing. Don't take this thing. Tell as many people as possible. Don't take it. Don't take it. And if you want evidences, my, my Facebook is, is open. My Facebook is open. Just go and scroll down on my Facebook wall. See all those posts that I post there. I post to try and warn people, to try and tell people, hey, look, look, share to as many people as you may want. Just share. I always put things which are positive there because I, I just don't want to give people jokes, give them political things, BBIs, which will not take anyone to hell, uh, to heaven. I'm, forget... All those things, they are good. Life is good. Fine. Politics are good. But they don't take anyone to heaven. Don't focus your mind on carnal things. Don't focus your mind on things which are perishable. Don't focus your mind on, on uh, things which are just this. Focus on eternal things. Put your faith in eternal things. Put your faith in the things of God. Walk with God. Do what is right. And when it comes, tell them that me have been purchased by the blood of Jesus and the Holy Spirit dwells in me and I will not fix anything else where the Holy Spirit is.
And for those who are not saved, this is the time that you should get straight with God. If there's a time that you needed to be saved, it's not even last year, last year, but one. No, it's not even those days. This is the time. We are not even living in the end times. We are in the final seconds, final seconds of the end times. Final seconds before the rapture. I may be speaking to you right now. The next day, you never see me because the rapture might happen. <laughs> This might be the last someone you'll ever hear. You never know why God directed you here. You never know why you're here and you're watching this. Because the Bible says the Holy Spirit draws you close to the things of God. Probably, maybe the Holy Spirit drawing you close so that you may hear this message. And so that you may share the message to a friend who you know she or he is lost. And that they might hear and they may be saved. You never know why God draws you. Every day you hear the things of God and you're like, let me quit, let me quit. Something tells you, hold on, hold on, don't go. Just stay. The Holy Spirit, he wants to draw you and hear and hear so that you can be saved. Please be saved. This is the time that you can be saved. Change your mind. Repentance is all about the change of mind and everything else, all your sins, all your dirty past, everything. The Holy Spirit is going to deal with it. Come as you are. Don't worry about what you've done. Oh, I'm going to stop my habits first. I'm going to stop my, my, my stealing. I'm going to stop my fornications. I'm going to stop my, my, my drunkenness. I'm going to stop. No, come as you are with all those things, with all those baggage that you have, everything that you have, come the way you are. Believe in Jesus. Believe in what he did for you. Change your mind and say, from today, I am believing Jesus Christ. And tell it and confess it to you, to God. I don't mean confession, speaking you, the words as the one that will save you. You confess what is already in your heart. You believe first and then you confess and tell God, now, Jesus, I believe in you. I believe that you died for my sins. You are buried and you rose again the third day according to the scriptures. I believe that you did this so that you can save me. And when you tell him that and you believe from your heart that he really did it for you and you understand why he had to die and you understand it, absolutely it comes into your mind, absolutely. That nanosecond, that millisecond that you have said that and you have believed that and you have understood that, you have gotten saved. And the Holy Spirit gets inside you. And the same Holy Spirit will quicken your body on that day as you go to heaven. So don't worry about your habits. Don't worry about anything actually as a matter of fact the moment you're saved jesus himself he will start changing you i mean the holy spirit will start changing you you are going to clubs every friday you will start going once a month you start again oh i need a house party oh i don't need any house party oh i need to read the bible you are watching crazy movies all of a sudden no interest things are changing the holy spirit is changing he's changing you you start changing it you start saying how comes, how comes, how comes, how comes these things are changing like this? How comes I'm all of a sudden, and how comes I, I no longer want to drink? How comes I no longer want to smoke? How comes I no longer want to chase after uh, other people, uh, you know, out there and doing wrong things? How comes? Because Jesus says, come as you are. Everything else, leave it. The Holy Spirit will deal with it. Don't worry about what people will say. Come as you are. Come as much corrupt you are, as much drunkard you are, as much whatever thing, sin that you know, anything which is, because he says, he will pick up your sin and throw it away. He has forgiven us. Come all ye who are heavy laden and I will set you free. He will set you free from all these things. The moment you believe, he will set you free of your heavy laden, of your things that you're carrying on your back. He will, don't, don't believe in this other gospel, which says, stop doing that and then come. That's another gospel. And the Bible tells us, do not believe another gospel. So I believe you've been uh, able to hear something. Please share this message. Let other people hear. Don't share for the sake of I'm promoting Keith. I need no promotion with views. I need no nothing. I just need people to hear the gospel people to hear. You never know. The person who might share to, to different groups, that might be the one person that you have saved his life from, you know, getting to hear such kind of message. God bless you and have a blessed time. See ya on Wednesday, same time, same place. Wednesday.